Good morning. I just want to let you know, actually it could be afternoon when you're watching this, but hello. Just wanted to let you know that if you haven't already downloaded the notes for this worksheet, go ahead and pause the video now and download the notes for this worksheet. Um, you may have already done your bell work, but we're going to go over it. So if you were running a, a new country, how would you choose where you put your capital? So the capital of your country, like the capital city. Take a moment, pause the video if you haven't already recorded your bell work on your bell worksheet, and um, answer the question. And as a reminder, every Friday you will submit a bell worksheet with Monday through Friday's bell work and the objectives. So those are on the page right where you found the link to this video. Um, last week we didn't have them just because I was absent a lot and it's hard to get bell work to brick and mortar students when I'm absent and I like to keep my e-learners and my brick and mortars doing the same assignments, but this week I will be collecting it. So record your bell work answer on a sheet of paper or on the document that I provide and the extras and every uh, extra what's it extras and others button or module, or you can do it on a blank sheet of paper. I don't care how you do it. Just make sure on Friday when you turn in a sheet, it's labeled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with your bell work and your objective. All right, take a second and answer this. Some ideas you could have jotted down are, you could choose it by location. Okay, do you want it on top of a mountain so you can see something? Do you want it near a river so you have access to water? Does it um, matter to you what the population of the area that you're thinking of putting your capital in? So do you wanna be in a heavily populated area or an area with very few people? Is it gonna be personal preference? Like I'm gonna put it by a beach because I like the beach. Are you going to choose where you put your capital based on defense? Are you gonna choose an area that's easy to defend like they did in London? They would put it in places where they could defend themselves from all sides. Are you going to choose based on like how fertile the soil is so that you know your capital always has access to food, right? You could have gotten any of those. Um, all right, well, we're gonna go forward. All right. So we are starting a new unit today, so say goodbye to regionalization. We are now in the unit called Spatial Reorganization. So this lesson is just your introduction to spatial reorganization. So let's start by examining the claim for this unit. Again, we will have a writing assessment at the end of this unit. Um, I think that we are going to move forward from just writing a thesis and begin to write mini essays, so probably um, three paragraphs. So we're going to pay attention closely to our claim. Our claim this unit is spatial reorganization is usually a result of migration. So on your worksheet, you're going to answer two questions. The first one is what terms or details do you need to learn more about in order to understand this claim? So what terms or details do you need to learn more about? And then what questions do you need to answer to evaluate this claim? Okay, so take a moment, do this on your worksheet, and I just wanna let you know, you cannot say, I have no questions. That is an easy way out or a cop out. I'm not an idiot, you're not an idiot, come up with a question, all right? Go ahead and pause the video to answer those two questions. All right, as we examine the next three sources, record your thoughts in the table on your worksheet. What do you see, think, and wonder, right? So these are your initial observations. We've been doing this all year now. Um, again, this is something that you cannot write. I don't have any. That's just a cop out. You need to write down something you see or think or wonder or one of each, right? A combination of them. It cannot be like two or three words, right? You are writing down observations. You have to look at these images and record your thoughts. All right, so source one is an excerpt from April 21st in 1960, and it's about Brazil getting a new capital. It's from National Geographic, published in 2014. On April 21st in 1960, Brazilians welcomed a new capital, Brasilia. Brasilia was a planned city, meaning it was specifically developed to be the capital of Brazil. It took architects, engineers, and city planners four years to build Brasilia. Brazil's cap previous capital, Rio de Janeiro, was a crowded coastal city. Rio's design slowed government work because buildings were located far apart from one another and traffic was heavy. Brasilia, on the other hand, is neatly divided into numbered blocks and sections. 
different sections were developed for different activities, such as government, banking, or embassies. Brasilia was constructed in the country's interior to spur development there. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, leave it here so you can look at it and record your initial thoughts, what you see, think, and wonder. All right, for source two, it says population data for Brasilia and Rio de Janeiro. So you will pause the video and record what you see, think, and wonder. Source three is a map of Brazil. Brazil is located in South America. So everything in yellow on this map shows Brazil. So go ahead, take pause the video and take a moment to record what you see, think, and wonder. All right, so question three on your paper asks, according to source one, what prompted Brazil to move its capital from Rio de Janeiro? All right, so go ahead, pause the video and answer question three on your worksheet. Question four asks you to examine source three provided here. What differences do you notice between the location of Brasilia and Rio de Janeiro? What would be some benefits to choosing Brasilia's location to build a capital city? Pause the video and answer this question. Question five asks you to examine source two. How have the populations of Rio de Janeiro and Brasilia changed since the capital was moved in 1960? That's the first part of the question. This is a two-part question, and typically students only ever answer one part, so please answer both. The second part of the question is, given how Rio de Janeiro is described in source one, how would it likely be described in present based on source two? So you're comparing the two sources. Source one is the excerpt from the article, how was Rio de Janeiro described in that article? How would it likely be described in 2020 based on source two? Pause the video and answer that question. All right, for this, you do not have to record anything on your notes. What is the population of the city of Tampa? You are just guessing. What do you think it is? Just specifically within city limits though, okay? So we're not talking about Wesley Chapel or Lutz or even Sefner just the city of Tampa. It's 392,890 people in 2020. So that's actually less than I thought. I've always said it's close to half a million, but it's less. Okay, so what about the population of Tampa Metro? So this includes Tampa Bay and the surrounding areas. Typically it's called like Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater. So I think like Lutz is Lutz isn't considered. Anything that's nearby Tampa is the Tampa Metro. So what do you think that population is? So that population is actually 2,877,000, right? Okay, what do you think the population of Rio de Janeiro is? Considering the Tampa Bay area is 2.8 million, the city of Tampa is almost 400,000. What do you think Rio de Janeiro is? You should be able to get this because you just looked at a table that told you. But if you don't remember, Rio de Janeiro has 14,458,000 compared to the Tampa Bay area, which is 2.8 million. It's like seven times, maybe six, I guess, times the size of us. That's a lot of people. All right, number six on your worksheet says let's compare. Um, so you're gonna pause this video and go to Google Earth. You just literally type in Google Earth and Google and it'll bring you there and you launch it. Um, and look at the city of Rio de Janeiro. And then also I want you to look at the city of Tampa. Take a few minutes, explore them on Google Earth, maybe find your house, right? Um, and then you need to write a one paragraph summary. In the summary, you're writing what are some of the similarities these regions have and some of the differences, right? There's a lot to compare when thinking about what we've learned so far this year. So you can talk about how the cities are organized. Remember the winding roads of London? Do ours or theirs look like that? 
Or what about the straight roads of Dubai? How do the physical features compare? We've talked about physical features within regions, right? Like some regions are regionalized based on their physical features. Do we have anything that are similar or different? Um, what do you think about the human features, right? So do you think that some of our human characteristics are going to be similar or different from those in Brazil? So you're going to write a paragraph. And guys, when I ask for a paragraph, I mean a paragraph, not one sentence, okay? Five plus sentences. This is a pre-AP class intended to design or to like help you get ready for an AP class. So when I ask for a paragraph, you have to give me a paragraph. A sentence is not enough. Take a moment, pause the video, go explore Google Earth, write your paragraph, and come back to finish up. The last thing you're going to do is create two statements of causation based on the evidence and the sources. So a statement of causation is basically explaining what caused what. So to explain the cause, of moving Brazil's capital, use the word because. To explain the effects of moving Brazil's capital, use the word so. So those are the two things you're doing. Statement one, hint. What moved Brazil, or what caused Brazil to move its capital? What, why did they move its capital? You know that, we just went over it. So you're gonna write a sentence about that using the word because. Statement hint two, what happened as a result of Brazil moving its capital? You know that, we just talked about it. So you're going to write a sentence about that using the word so. Also, check Canvas for a bonus opportunity. I am going to post a reading with some document-based questions. Bonus opportunities are completely optional. They are for those of you who have been asking how to get your grade up or have missed work in the past that's closed and can't be made up. Um, or if you have a great grade, it's still a good idea to do to give you a little bit of cushion for if you don't do well on a test, etc. Right? It's open to everyone and it is open until Friday, meaning you could submit it until midnight Friday. So take a minute and look at that if you're up to it. Number eight, the last one on your worksheet is to review our unit claim because this is what we do our writing assessment on, right? So I want you to be able to be familiar with this claim and have like looked at it several times throughout this unit. So our claim is that spatial reorganization is usually a result of migration. Does the information that we explored today support that claim or does the information that we um, explored today challenge that claim? Right, so that's the last thing you're going to do that should wrap you up. Um, you will submit your worksheet on Canvas today. Make sure you upload a picture of both sides. Have a great day, guys.